in this administration, because I've already um, re uh, wrote President Trump a letter and told him about myself, and asked him what I could do in his administration to help the disabled, not only in South Carolina, but uh, the United States, because you yourself know what I can do. And so I would like to know. Well, Vivian, uh, I want you to get a, uh, a copy of the letter and uh, any supporting information to our office. Uh, and uh, and I, I still cherish that I had the opportunity to meet you in the Miss Wheelchair South Carolina pageant where I was a judge. And I saw uh, how uh, energetic and talented and competent you are. And uh, it was so inspiring to me to see uh, uh, young women who
um, I was disappointed when uh, and we were, uh, the uh, referendum was, uh, not the referendum, but that, that uh, President Trump pulled us out of the Paris Accord. And I wanted to understand your position on our energy policy, given that we've got a big problem with SCNG, and also uh, given that there is a uh, possible uh, conflict um, uh, with uh, drilling off of that coast and uh, tourism, and uh, as well about uh, how uh, we're going to address the future when uh, countries like China are leading the way in alternative energy production.
other than the 10% disability they gave him when he retired. And I paid for his care. We had nursing care. We kept him at home 24-7. And we have not heard one thing. Congress has had a request 
going back 1,400 years, and that um, the uh, the mass killings, and of course the most people being killed are Muslims, uh, but the mass killings are uh, by uh, extremists, uh, uh, either uh, Sunni or Shiite, uh, who, uh, uh, due to this division, uh, see that uh, that by uh, killing other people, that somehow they um, expedite uh, their way to heaven. But uh, the bottom line is that we're in a generational war. Uh, we, I think that uh, the authorization we have should be limited to blocking wherever um, you can have uh, safe havens for terrorists to be able to uh, attack uh, America or its allies. Uh, and we know this, uh, that they, are, uh, they pledge. Uh, death to America, death to Israel, and I, I take that very seriously. Apparently, there was another um, uh, terrorist uh, possible attack this afternoon in Michigan. Uh, uh, I'm still um, so sad. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the UK caucus, and for the attacks on London, uh, whether it be the troops just uh, stabbed on the street or uh, citizens who are being run off, run over by um, terrorists who uh, have uh, attacked even on the um, London Bridge, uh, over and over again, we have a, a real, I have a real concern that we must stop the terrorists overseas or they will uh, expand their efforts to attack the American people. And I'd like to let everybody know again, to ask a question at any point during the call, please press star three to sign up for the email newsletter. Uh, Please press star zero, and if you, uh, when you press these numbers at star three or star zero, uh, you'll still be uh, in line, and uh, uh, you'll be able to hear uh, the uh, town hall by telephone uh, and be able to uh, uh, and continue to get to your question and then come back. And we have uh, Bothwell from Columbia. Uh, Congressman Wilson, good evening, sir. I wanted to uh, first thank you for serving as our congressman these many years, and we're so honored to have you. I was honored to see you on the House floor last month when you were giving a speech upon President Trump's return, uh, thanking him for his successful, very successful, overseas trip to Saudi Arabia and Italy and those other countries. And I also just wanted to thank you very quickly for your staff. I called, they were very efficient. We were visiting Washington. We wanted to see the White House. And bless them, they got us tickets. Leah Grace was a great help. So we were able to go to the White House and really enjoyed Washington and they visited the Capitol. I do want to say that I really hope that the Republicans will be very successful in repealing Obamacare and primarily strengthening our nation's defenses. We have a lot of enemies, and I know we have, the Obama administration had weakened our military, and I know we need to strengthen it, and I pray that that's what we're in the process of doing. Uh, I also pray our Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade. <laughs> and if the caller a little while ago mentioned the uh, Paris Climate Agreement, I'm personally very happy that we withdrew that. And I do want to thank you for your kindness to that veteran's widow a few minutes ago. We are praying for y'all daily, and uh, we just pray that our nation will come come through very, very strong. Thanks to y'all's leadership, uh, and no question, just want to say thank you. Well, Boswell, thank you very much, and uh, you're proving uh, what a fine attorney you are. And I uh, and I, I want to let you know too that uh, uh, indeed, uh, President Trump's. Uh, to Riyadh and uh, to uh, Jerusalem uh, were so meaningful to me. I've been to many of the countries. He spoke uh, to plant, the leaders plant, of 50 plant. different countries. Uh, and it was, uh, it, it was uh, even the backdrop was amazing. It was the uh, uh, American uh, Arab Islamic Conference. Uh, and uh, with all of the um, misrepresentation of his um, uh, dis disapproval or even dislike of people of Islamic faith, uh, he clearly proved um, that uh, it's not Islamic faith that uh, is his concern. Uh, it's Islamic extremists, uh, Islamic terrorists. Uh, and the Islamic terrorists, as I pointed out, and as he pointed out in his speech, and 
uh, I urge people to look at that speech because it had such meaning. I've been to, uh, of the 50 countries, I've probably been to 25. And everywhere, in all of the different countries I've gone to, which have uh, uh, Muslim majorities, the people appreciate America as peace through strength. The way to have uh, peace in the Middle East is through a strong America, uh, working uh, with our allies, uh, because the very first people who are being killed in mass murder, murder slaughter, uh, are uh, fellow Muslims. And so uh, his, his uh, visit there and then his reaffirmation of our uh, love and affection uh, for the people of Israel, it was just very heartwarming to me. And so, uh, Bob, well, thank you very much and uh, best wishes for your continued success. And we have uh, John S. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Wilson. Uh, this is more or less a comment or uh, a question. Uh, and I think I represent uh, the biggest majority in this country on this, uh, both the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, when are they going to start working together to get things done up in Washington? This deal with the Russian thing, it, most people could care less about all that and all the money that's being spent there and the time. We have a lot more pressing issues than that kind of stuff going on. We need, uh, as far as health care, we need affordable health care. Obamacare is a joke. If you don't, if you don't have anything, it's great. But if you try to get on it and you own a little something or try to work, you can't afford it. Uh, the protection of our country, plus I'm looking at the infrastructure with our bridges, our roads. It, th these are pressing issues in this country that needs to be fixed and not some of that other silly stuff that goes on up in Washington. And maybe... Good news has no feet and bad news has wings. 
and uh, and that's what we're into. And uh, obviously, we have significant disagreements here. But I'm really grateful that in uh, in the first 150 days, that uh, more legislation has passed the House, 158 bills, than in the last four administrations, and also uh, more bills have been signed into law, 37 than in the past uh, four uh, administrations. And so um, uh, it's not getting the attention it should. Uh, but uh, And then I'm really grateful that it was stated uh, on Obamacare that it couldn't be repealed. Uh, and uh, the good news is that the House did vote that way. And then I'm also very hopeful that tomorrow uh, the Senate uh, will be uh, working um, with the House uh, to complete replacing Obamacare with a system that will work. Uh, that will be beneficial to the American people. We we see the consequence of Obamacare in South Carolina. Premiums went up 120 uh, percent. We know that the choice went down to one. Uh, we know that I know I run into it. The people have lost their jobs. Uh, people have lost their businesses uh, because of the uh, taxes and the reduced hours that are, o- Obamacare uh, requires. And uh, I'm also hearing from people who have co-pays, as was identified a few minutes ago, the co-pays are so high uh, that people uh, can't get service and there's a denial of service, delay of service. We can do better than this and that's why I'm very grateful uh, for the leadership of uh, Speaker Paul Ryan. And we have uh, Gorman and Aiken. Yeah, uh, Joe, this is Gorman, Ridgely, uh, Aiken, South Carolina. I'm a retired nuclear physicist with the Savannah River site and uh, have worked at times with Lindsey Graham with the, uh, uh, not with you since I've retired, but with regard to the uh, the pensions that really were kind of taken away from us. Uh, I'm used to how the government works. I was born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia. My sister was a lobbyist, graduated from VMI, was uh, an instructor in nuclear weapons at Fort Belvoir for Apex 5 holders at the Pentagon, tactical use of uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, and it's just so much talk going on up there. There always has been. It's uh, a bunch of people wanting to live in Washington. And I, my reason for, for talking to you is I know that you're not afraid to speak up. And it's uh, really discouraging to me, and, and I'm sure a lot of people across the country, that somebody like Lindsey Graham or John McCain is not supporting Donald Trump. You guys ought to get together like Duke Greenwich had the contract with America and, and come out and support the man. I know he's got a lot of things uh, that, that maybe are not his strong points, but for the first and probably the only time, we got a guy in there that knows how to get things done. I worked for a number of years in the Spanish River, uh, run those nuclear reactors, produced plutonium and tritium for nuclear weapons. We didn't defeat the new t- the uh, the Russians with our army. It was with our nuclear weapons and so forth. We ran them on the ground with that. And so the, the people that I worked with were very sharp. They got things done. They did fool around. Uh, big responsibility. Had we blown up one of those reactors, you would have had to evacuate half the southeast. And it's just really irritating, disgusting to me, that the Republicans have this opportunity, and, and it looks like they're blowing it. They ought to support the man. Maybe they don't agree with some of the things that uh, that he said or done, but the world's a tough place. And fortunately, the man we got in there is a tough guy. He knows how to get things done. He's not a politician. And I just would really encourage you to get to... Use your uh, outspokenness uh, along with Donald <laughs> Trump and try to get you the, uh, the equivalent to a contract with America. The re- Republicans supporting that guy. I can and, and Gorman, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you as a uh, as a retiree of uh, SRS. Uh, you are a Cold War victor. Uh, also, as a uh, myself, as a graduate of Washington and Lee, I appreciate the Virginia Military Institute. And so I, uh, I, 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 I grew up in Charleston, and so uh, it was really fun in Lexington, Virginia, uh, to see cadets uh, that I identified as cadets. Uh, and uh, so I've always had a high regard for VMI. What a great institution. Congratulations uh, on your background. And I, I want you to know that, I, and I need to repeat this because, uh, again, uh, we, we have a, a, a substantially uh, unfriendly media. And, um, and, uh, and, and people need to know that 
uh, we did have um, a uh, contract with America. It was called A Better Way. And that's what we ran on in the last election. And we are implementing A Better Way. That's why uh, today this can be looked up. Uh, that 158 bills have been passed in the House, more than any other administration in the last four administrations. Uh, and then uh, 37 bills have been signed into law, again, more than um, the last four administrations. And then, uh, sadly, uh, Gorman, uh, uh, I, I, of the 158 bills, I don't think uh, one Democrat voted for anything. And so uh, a lot of the people who are, and, and I think that's disappointing because I looked at legislation of the prior administration and um, would support uh, that individual when it was right and uh, oppose him when it was wrong. Uh, but they have not supported us at all. And so uh, I, I do want you to know that, um, uh, and I also think the American people know this, uh, in the last 24 hours uh, there have been elections in Georgia uh, and right uh, in South Carolina. Uh, and uh, good people have been elected, uh, and uh, with uh, Congressman-elect uh, uh, Ralph Norman of, um, of uh, uh, Brock Hill, uh, with uh, Congresswoman-elect, the first female Republican member of Congress uh, from Georgia, uh, Karen uh, uh, Handel, uh, they uh, both have indicated, Gorman, that they are coming to uh, back up uh, President Trump to support uh, the uh, the contract uh, of a better way uh, and, and work um, to accomplish. And, and uh, so I, I uh, in fact, I'll be with um, uh, Congressman-elect Norman tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm very grateful that I will be presiding at a uh, meeting of the Republican conference, and uh, we're having uh, another uh, individual who is doing an excellent job, and that's the American ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Nikki Haley is going to be uh, speaking to uh, the conference tomorrow, and I have the opportunity to preside. And I'm really proud of uh, uh, Nikki, uh, of the ambassador's service. She has reversed the prior administration's um, policies of betraying uh, the people of Israel. Uh, uh, there was an abstention by the prior administration. We reversed that. Her first speech uh, was uh, with her in New York on Monday. And her first speech was actually to condemn uh, the Russian Federation on their uh, aggression uh, in uh, Ukraine and uh, Georgia, uh, Republic of Georgia. Uh, and so I'm really proud of her leadership. I, I was grateful to see her uh, visiting and supporting the efforts uh, of um, refugee assistance uh, in Jordan of the refugees from Syria. And then I also thanked her for her very strong op-ed. I believe it was also in the Aiken Standard. Uh, where she uh, was so uh, supportive of human rights and critical of the UN Human Rights Council, uh, which has uh, overlooked uh, the uh, totalitarian conduct of uh, Cuba and North Korea. So, Gorman, um, there are good things happening, and I'm trying to get the message out, and by you even asking the question, it gave me an opportunity uh, to let you know that, uh, uh, and indeed, it, it, good things are actually happening. And, and so I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here and have the privilege of serving. And we uh, now go to uh, the last question would be from uh, Charles of Aiken. <laughs> Excuse me, Representative. Uh, I am a Republican. I haven't voted for a Democrat since Jimmy Carter. But I worry about Social Security and the disability fund. Their insolvency is coming in a few years. I've always wondered why we put a cap on the income that people had to pay the Social Security tax on. If you had no limit on that income, it seems it would solve a lot of the problem. And the people would be paying the tax they can most afford to. And I'll be quiet and let you answer. Uh, yes. and, and Charles, thank you. I, I share your concern about Social Security uh, because indeed uh, insolvency is ahead. And, uh, and then, but the, uh, what happens, uh, Charles, is that e even by mentioning this, and I'm going to get in trouble right now, uh, intentionally, because I'm going to tell the truth, and that is that uh, we need to reform Social Security just as you indicated, but I would change it in this regard, and that is uh, for people who are 55 age or younger, uh, they should have an op opportunity to put money into a personal savings account, and then they would agree to accept a lesser 
Social Security benefit when they retire. And that would uh, be beneficial to individuals, and it would also be beneficial to people of age, and it would be voluntary. And so if people don't want to be uh, in a system where they have a personal savings account with uh, later uh, receiving uh, Social Security, uh, they, they wouldn't have to. They could be in the current system as it is. But I know that the vast majority of young people, and I consider people 55 and young uh, and, and below young, um, the, this would uh, let the system survive. And so we, I, I'm still working toward that end. Now, the downside, any time you mention the word Social Security, uh, Charles, there are people out there who misrepresent uh, what is being said. I fully understand that, except it's not right. Uh, they'll show a um, person who uh, is legitimately trying to save Social Security, they will show that individual is pushing grandmother over the cliff. That's not what's happening. We, I share your concern. And, and so I, I will be uh, supporting efforts to reform so that uh, the younger people of our country have uh, the opportunity 